Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Zero 060. On this episode, the plan is to properly heat cycle the engine, and if that all goes to plan, uh, hopefully get this car out for a bit of a test drive and see how this E90 engine is actually gonna work. Now, before I get into that, I just wanna do a bit of housekeeping. I need to, well, I really need to apologize. YouTube does this thing with the comments where it's, uh, it's got this section called held for review. So if anyone has any profanities in their comments, which you guys don't do that many, uh, or any links that they think are spam, it automatically uh, ho holds the comment. Now it used to give me a notification when it was holding comments. Um, and that sort of stopped about three weeks ago. So I'd randomly go in and check and there just hasn't been any held comments for a while. And I thought, well, that's weird. No one's spamming us with links, that's cool. However, yesterday YouTube's like, refreshed itself and there was something like 350 held comments and I know a lot of you guys put genuine comments in there and I hadn't seen them. Uh, there was even like lots from when we were trying to work out the head gasket where people had put links to people selling head gaskets and the lock situation. Um, so I really do apologize if I missed one of your comments over the last two or three weeks. Uh, I don't know what's going on with YouTube, certainly not intentional. I try and reply to every single person that comments but uh, that one caught me out. Anyway, let's get on with this. So the plan with this car today, so hopefully you saw yesterday, we've realized that we had a serious corrosion issue on the power wires and more importantly, the power wire for the water pump was actually completely disconnected. There's a huge mosquito in there. If you could exit the vehicle, that would be good. Uh, okay, so today I want to, I did it a couple of times last night, but today I want to see if the <laughs> water pump, I don't know why I keep calling it fuel pump. Oh my God, that's crazy. Uh, make sure the water pump works as it should. And if it does, we're gonna heat cycle it. So we're doing the 10 second pedal. Heard the water pump fire up. She's working as she should be. That is awesome. Keen viewers will notice I have got the front bumper on. The other thing I've got to do is put the headlight washers back on. All the sensors are connected, fog lights, etc. So we're getting close. So basically uh, what I really need to do, I want to heat cycle the engine, make sure we don't have any weird issues when it's just idling, then check the transmission fluid and then we go for a drive. Sounds easy. Let's start it up. All right. Oh, been a while since it sat there. So let's connect the JB4. I like to log when I do these new startups just in case it picks up on something that I don't notice till later. So we are connected, we'll start logging and we'll start her up. And one of the reasons I wanted to go through this process, if you haven't been watching, like we had this motor, we had the head off this motor, re reseated all the valves, obviously done the head gasket. Um, there's just a lot of things I could have cocked up so I want to basically get it up to full running temperature make sure that everything is fine before we just go straight out on the road and take it for a drive um, yeah I had the whole engine out so there's a lot of things that I might not have correctly done up cool that's the date and time set let's go and have a listen to everything from the engine bay actually I'll just show you guys I don't think I showed you in the first video we no longer have a rough idle sounds like it used to yeah so let's get a few relevant things up here we want coolant temp or water temp they call it uh, keep watching that we're not going to be boosting on this startup we really just want to be watching all the temperatures we'll keep watching AFR cool so I want to see that water temp get up to about 80, 90, and oil temp get up to 70. Okay, water temp is at 50, oil temp's at 35. No issues yet. Alternator is warm again. Yeah, it's warmer than the block. Mm, still not sure on that one. So we're just starting to get a little bit of smoke, which I was expecting. As it gets hot, there'll be 
oil residue and bits and pieces on stuff. We also did spill a fair bit of coolant down on the exhaust over here with the turbo and the intakes and stuff. Water temps at 60, oil temps at 37. But the engine sounds really smooth. Um, my old E92 engine had an audible tick when you left it idling like this, so this sounds better. Hopefully it is. So I hope you can hear me alright guys. Water temp's now up to 74 C and oil's at 47. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a rev, bring it, off, bring it up off idle a bit. But I'll let you guys listen into the microphone just there. So that didn't really do much to the temperature. Uh, we'll just let it keep climbing, I guess. All right, guys, well, that's been going for a bit over 10 minutes. Water temp's now at 93 and oil temp is at 72. So that means it will actually start trying to properly boost with the JB4. Might just give it a bit of a rev. Um, I might have to cut this short because even though I've got all the windows and doors open, it's getting a bit fumy in here. Um, but just give it a bit more of a rev. Oh, you can see some smoke burning off the exhaust manifold, oil burning off the exhaust manifold. So I've just been standing outside in the fresh air, but we're just hitting 100C on the water temp. Oil temp's 86. That's nearly 20 minutes of idling, which is crazy how long it takes to get up to full temp. But the old motor did the same thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'll switch the AC on and hopefully it still works even though it doesn't have gas. Um, and that should turn the thermo fan on and then that should come down pretty quick. The thermo fan doesn't appear to have turned on. So maybe because the AC is not gassed up at the moment, that's not going to work. Okay, so normally this car, if I've got the AC on, the water temp will sit around 90 degrees C. Um, the only time I ever see it go over 100 is when I don't have the AC on. And because the AC is not gassed up, I guess it's not actually turning the AC system on. So what I'm gonna do, I'll wait a bit longer and just see if the thermofan cuts in. I have seen this at 110 without having the AC on. So we'll see what it gets to. Which may have even been, may have even seen 115. I just wanna make sure it gets to the point where it's hot enough to actually start cooling itself down. Hey guys, I hope you can hear me all right. Uh, I just come around the front and the fan is actually on, but it's not on very hard, but it did come down. So it got up to about 106 and the fan is off again. It's weird. Okay, the fan has just kicked on. I can feel it. You probably can't see it, but we'll see if that temperature drops. Our fan's off. So it must just be trying to keep it around that 105. Huh. So it seems to turn on at 107 and it drops pretty bloody quickly. So it seems to cut in at like 106, 107. And it's off again. And it comes back down. 
I'd say that is holding its temperature properly. It's not overheating. It wants to sit at 105. Again, it's weird because I've never, I've nearly always had air con. Okay, so we'll turn her off. Everything seems fine. Go back on. We'll do a warm start. Make sure it does a hot start okay. Fuel pressure high is a bit higher. It'll settle back down, I guess. Injectors are so noisy when you haven't got the cover on. I think it's okay. All right, let's see what the transmission temperature's at because I'm gonna need to let it cool down again, which I'm cool with. We're at 45. Okay, I think I can actually check transmission oil temp at that level. I haven't taken it out of park, and the reason being, it will be low on oil at this point in time. So I wanna get the transmission oil level at the correct level, pardon me, before we uh, even take it out of park. Okay, so we are up in the air, and that's so that I can get access to the transmission. And we're gonna do the transmission level check. Now, I did drop quite a lot of transmission fluid when I dropped the engine, so I'm expecting it to take like at least a liter. So let's see, uh, when you do a transmission fill on an M54 or a ZF six speed, I should say. Still nervous about it. Uh, when you do a transmission fill, the engine needs to be, sorry, the oil temp in the transmission needs to be between 30 and 50 degrees C. And we're at 45. So let's go and check this level. Ugh. So hopefully you guys can see that all right. So you guys can see how much goes in. Hey, it's starting to come out. Okay, so that is it done. Now let me get the bung in. Oh, I'm making a mess. I'm making a mess. Stop making a mess. Oh, I hate transmission fluid. You don't run down my arm. Oh my God, I'm making so much mess. Oh man. Oh. Now I can't get the bung started. I've forgotten how messy this procedure is. Ah, all right. Fuck. <laughs> Ow. Well, transmission fluid is checked. That is a, uh, that is a mess. All right, let's turn the car off. It's time to take it for a drive. I'm gonna get these wheels back on and we'll get it out of the shed. Well, I nearly forgot, before we actually go out on the road and drive it sensibly, uh, I've got to load a base map. Now, JSR has sent me a new base map for the new engine. So we'll go back in flash and we've got the new one there. And yeah, I'm back on my cheap KCAN cable. ECU not found. Hmm. Let's try again. That could be because the adapter went to sleep. There we go. Cheap KCAN cables for the win. Uh, let's just check the options. Make sure nothing weird's going on. Adjust vehicle, no. Don't need to do any of that. Exhaust burble, I'm gonna leave it there. Cold start noise reduction, deactivate kick down switch. Launch control, ignition coils are OEM. Stock O2 sensors. Coolant target stock, desensitized milk tables, no. Port injection and meth safety coil cut. They're the important ones. Boom. So, map right. Erasing section one. I'm gonna let that go through and put a few more bits and pieces back on the engine. Huh. Yeah, basically that cover. Might be ready to go for a drive. Well, it's nearly time. It's on the ground. Everything's back in the engine bay. 
Sometimes even get it out of the garage, which might be a bit of a challenge. But we'll see. Okay, so I got back in the car and low oil light was on. The car was on a bit of an incline, but I've checked on the dash cluster and it is at the minimum level in red, which I've never seen before. So let me add a little bit more oil. I put about six and a half liters in it, but obviously the engine was very dry. Okay, oil has had a liter added. Watch, it'll probably tell me it's over full now. But let's go and take this for a drive. We've got no AC, so windows will be down, but I also want to be able to listen to any funny noises that may be occurring. Um, we are in map two on the JB4, so we're only targeting 19 and a half PSI and we're on a base map, so nothing's gonna be crazy. Um, I'm just gonna take it super steady, not go too far from the house, try and keep it within tow rope distance, and we'll see how we go. I'll let you know if anything exciting happens. Well, I've done a couple of runs up and down, some nice slow areas. It's going through the gears fine, no funny noises. This is a higher speed area. Let's see if it gets some boost. I turned the boost gauge off. <laughs> Let's put that back on. Boost. Okay. We are boosting a little bit right now. It's quick. I forgot how quick it was. Jeez, it's quick. Fuck, it's quick. You can't sort of roll into the power. It's just, it builds boost and then you're poof. Control was on, that's why it cut power. Okay, it didn't appear to just spin up then quite easily. Let's go again. Second gear. Missed that. I have missed that. Woo. Okay, that was a weird blow off valve noise. Or it could have been a, it could have been a tire scrape in a guard actually. full boost. The blow-off valves sound different. Um, maybe it's because the windows are down. All right, I'll keep driving. I'll see you guys in a sec. She knocked the phone off. Okay, so I've still got to get used to that diff, but that felt, felt like there might have been a vibration in the drive line, but it could have been the rear end trying to, trying to struggle for traction. We're only at 20 PSI, but that was a slight curve, and that was wide open throttle in a second where before that diff, it would have definitely spun up. It's funny, like, I haven't spent enough time in this car with the brakes and the diff. I literally got them in and then had the engine problem. 
And I remember the first drive of that, the diff, it, um, it didn't feel, it, it changed the way the car felt. I think the engine's okay. I, I think it is. I, I'm gonna really hope it is. It's time to do a third gear log. I think. Slow down a bit more, and wide open throttle. She's still nippy. Doesn't feel like 27 PSI though. Oh well, all right, I'll, um, I think, I don't want to jinx it, but I think it, everything's okay at this point. I need to get it back. I need to have a good look at everything again on the hoist, make sure nothing's come loose, any of the steering, suspension. I've just had a coolant warning. Yeah, however, this bottle does do that when you brake hard. Coolant warning's gone, so I think I've just got a dodgy sensor. That was coming up at roll racing, if you watch that video hard braking um all right i'm gonna head back i'll see you guys when i get back but guy i think we've had some luck we've got the original water pump in coolant temp it gets up over about 100 if i'm not moving quickly but again we've got no thermo fan and it doesn't get over i didn't see it go over 104. oh i think we might have had some luck maybe don't want to jinx it Diff is amazing. She spun up that time. Well guys, we're back from the drive. All the temps did exactly what they should have done. I've got those logs, which I will check, and I will check them properly when I get back into the computer. Uh, when I got back, I could hear wastegate rattle quite badly, and all I've done is adjust the default wastegate position, and it seems to have shut it up. Maybe you can hear that. You can hear it worse through the wheel arch. All in all, I think it's okay. Um, I don't know why the wastegate default position would need to have been adjusted, unless the diaphragms have gone funny or something from sitting. I honestly don't know, but adjusting the default wastegate position on the JB4 seems to have fixed. So just done a quick battery change on the GoPro. Um, but yeah, I think, I think. I'm very hesitant because I don't want to jinx myself. Um, I know a lot of you guys think I'm really good at all this mechanical stuff and it's I'm learning as I go. This is the first time I've done this sort of stuff. So a lot of it is potluck that it goes smoothly. Um, but we're getting there. And hey, don't they look good together? All right, so. My one's gonna go back in and on the hoist, just for a, a fluid check, make sure nothing's leaking, everything's fine. But I'm not gonna do that straight away. What I'm gonna do now, because we've actually managed to clear those codes, we need to do a video update on that car. Uh, I'm gonna go and actually do an adaptation relearn on the gearbox on that car. And in tomorrow's video, you'll see the first drive of the $1,000 E92. But holy shit, she's running, I'm stoked. It looks so good. And it works. It works. Gotta check the coolant. <laughs> but I reckon that's a dodgy sensor. Oh. All right guys, we're back in business. Time to get this thing wound up again. I'm gonna send these logs off to JSR tonight 
Um, I'll check them first, make sure there's no weird stuff, but I'll send them off to JSR tonight, see if we can get this thing dialed in again and start having some fun with it. I've got to get this diff properly tested, the brakes properly tested. Um, it's going to be a good couple of weeks. Uh, do keep in mind, it won't all happen this week. I want to get some miles up on this engine, make sure the engine is fine, but it seems to be okay. It gets up to temp, it cools down, it's handled some load. Just got to make sure we haven't got like a million timing corrections in those logs we've just done. I'm in a good mood. We're good. I'm going to get this edited. Looking forward to your comments. We'll catch you later. Peace.